thing you want to say That's the way to do the game You got balls because we got balls Darby You've read the story of his life or you've had it read for you You may not have read it all but you know the most important parts The ones that make him stand out amongst other men And though you've formed an opinion of his significance in your life It is likely that the opinion is not entirely your own His name is Jesus he comes from Nazareth, and he's joining us tonight so that you can know more of the story. So, Jesus, is it okay if I call you Jesus? Yeah, that's what most people call me. Thank you, Jesus. I know many of our listeners are sitting at home right now with one question on their minds. You probably know what that question is. The virgin birth. Come on. Do you really believe that? Wow, you go right to the meat. I know none of the people in our village believed her. I know it was a major embarrassment for my father. He loved my mom, though, so he stood by her and supported her, even though I don't think he ever truly believed it either. But me? Do I believe it? I think this should really be the question I answer last. Fair enough. So let's skip forward a bit. You calmed a storm and saved your disciples from drowning. Was it a miracle? You know, timing really is everything. I watched that movie Forrest Gump where his legless friend sits on the mast cursing God and the storm for ruining his life. Eventually the storm subsided. Did he calm it? No. But if it had ended within seconds of the start of his tirade, it would have seemed so to stupid people. Whoa, Jesus. You just called your disciples stupid. Care to elaborate on that? Well, let me give you a bit of a background on the area first so you'll understand better. Keep in mind that the Sea of Galilee isn't much of a sea. It's more like a lake. I've got pictures, but I, was, I wasn't told this was a radio show, so I guess I... We do have an internet feed, a video feed, and it's streaming to our fans online right now. There's the camera over there. So, so I just hold the pictures up to it? You know, it might be better if I give them to our techie behind the glass and let him scan them in. Then you can just point and click and they'll automatically show on everyone's screen. And to you people listening on the radio, the video of this episode will be available for download online following this broadcast. I just love technology. Uh, getting back to the story... The Sea of Galilee was really just a lake, not even a big lake. There are very few points along the shore you cannot see the other side from. Where the Jordan empties into it, it forms a delta. Sand, mud, and silt are deposited around the mouth of the Jordan. Ridges form just below the surface that can extend for a mile or more. They may extend straight out or they may form barriers depending on the type and amount of earth they are composed of. Today this is a problem I'm told for commercial fishing vessels. Ridges or sandbars form just below the water line, making it difficult for the large boats to pass. It must periodically be dredged. Even in my day there were areas where even small boats could not pass during drought conditions. You know, I remember walking along the sandbars in the Indian River Lagoon in Florida that extended out for a mile or more just like you describe. I'm told there are even areas in the Caribbean like that. Can you imagine standing on a sandbar just below the water surface with no land in sight? It's the same there. Under the right conditions, a man could walk almost half the distance between Capernaum and Bethsaida without ever getting his knees wet. A straight shot practically hugs the coast anyway. On one particular evening, I had sent my disciples ahead to Capernaum and planned myself on walking there along the beach later. Now, Jesus, why would you separate from your disciples like that? You have to understand, there were a lot of people tagging along after us, and I was going to try to lose them. I had found a spot in the hills to rest and hide for a bit, waiting for everyone to either leave or fall asleep. But as I looked out across the water, I noticed my disciples stuck on a sandbar. The idiots were rowing and rowing and not getting anywhere. I really felt bad for them. They really were not very smart. Peter was the worst, though. I called him my little rock because nothing got through that skull. 
After watching them strain their muscles in vain, I headed on out to show the idiots what they needed to do to free the boat. I was still a hundred or so feet from the boat when my disciples saw me. Idiots. It never occurred to them that I was walking on a, on a sandbar. They nearly soiled themselves when they saw me. I called to them to let them know it was just me. Peter insisted that I allow him to come out to meet me. He takes two or three steps and gets so excited that he starts walking all around saying, Look at me! Look at me! I'm walking on water with Jesus! Rockhead! Walked right off the edge of the ridge. I grabbed him before he fell full in. He wasn't the best swimmer. I said, Peter, keep your eyes on where I'm at and stay with me and you'll be just fine. We walked back to the boat and as I was getting in I gave it a bit of a push to free it. By that time, though, it was so dark we missed Capernaum and ended up in Genesaree, but they were just happy to be on land. Well, Jesus, I had my crew do a bit of research on your walking on water miracle, and here's what they found. The disciples must have been pushed by the wind onto a sand ridge not far from the mouth of the River Jordan. It couldn't have been more than half a mile from shore. According to the story, they departed well before evening. When evening came, they were a good distance out, but unable to go any further. They were stuck. Now, even in those days, Capernaum was little more than four miles away, even if you walked along the beach to get to it. You could have walked the whole distance in less than two hours. The boat was a lot closer, but you didn't go out to it until early morning. Why did you wait so long? Okay, you caught me. See, there was this cute young girl who had been giving me the eye all day. She even brushed against me once. Ooh, what she did to me I can't talk about on your show. Let's just say it was a very good night for me. Well, I must say I didn't see that one coming. But why all the cloak and dagger? Why the deception? You were a grown man. Why pretend you don't have needs? My disciples were mostly just boys. I know they were men according to tradition, but you should have seen the way they looked at me. I had a reputation to uphold for them. Peter especially. I think Thomas and Judas would have been okay with the truth, but Peter? Did I tell you what a rockhead Peter was? You know, I told him once that if I ever was to build a church, I'd use his rockhead in the foundation and it'd never fall. He thought it was a compliment. Well, Jesus, I've enjoyed it, but I see we're out of time. Can we count on another chat with you in the future? We still don't have your answer on the Immaculate Conception thing, although I have an idea on that. Hey, I've got nothing better to do. Call my agent and we'll book something. Well, folks, that's all the time we have tonight. We'll speak some more with Jesus in the future, but for now, I'm Balls Darby, and you've just heard more of the story. He's a witch! He's a witch! How do you know he's a witch? He made the blind see! Yeah, and now the poor guy can't make a living. How's he supposed to support himself at his age with no skills and his only trade stole from him by that nasty witch? I see. Did he do anything else? Oh yeah, he turned water into wine. Brought the dead back to life to do his bidding. Consorted with the devil himself. Made plants wither just by cursing them. Lots of other things. Yes, yes, I see. Do go on now. What else has he done? I heard him telling kids to hate their parents. Shocking. We must be cautious how we proceed here, or we could turn him into a martyr. <laughs>